Hey Metalheads, um, this is Toby from Metalheads.de. I'm sitting here next to uh, Dino from Fear Factory, so yes. thanks for, for having the time, you know, taking, taking me here and, 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 you know, answering my stupid questions. <laughs> well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you and, uh, you know, for everybody who's watching. Yeah. So, um, I think, you know, um, starting with what I heard last week, so you, you had an accident with your bus um, last week and there is a lot of rumors about it. Maybe you can, you can tell the people directly really what happened and if everyone is okay and that stuff. Sure. Well, um, we were on the road, of course, in Germany and there was a little bit of ice and water on the road and the bus uh, slid off the road a little bit and hit the back of another truck. Oh, okay. Yeah, and basically the whole, when the bus had the impact, the whole bus stopped. I mean, we're going like probably 60 miles an hour, boom, Whoa, okay. stop. So everybody who was sleeping went forward. Poof. That was so, very intense then. Yeah, so <laughs> my feet hit the, hit the wall like that, everybody. Okay. So of course, everybody got up, got scared, you know. We heard um, all the dishes and the big coffee maker and poof, hit the floor. Jeez, um, okay. Yeah, so when we got up, uh, we had to put our shoes on because we we're gonna get uh, we would get cut. So we went downstairs, went to the front of the bus, and we saw the impact. And yeah, it was it was a pretty scary moment. I mean, anytime there's any kind of an accident like that, especially in a bus, you know, with uh, you know 16 people sleeping on a bus, it gets kind of scary. Yeah. Okay, but everyone, um, everyone is fine. And everybody was fine, of course. You know, a little scared. Mm -hmm. um, But the bus company was really nice, and they, within an hour, we had another bus, so we were able to get to another bus. Everybody was able to go to sleep, and we made the next show. Okay, now oh, that's pretty. You know, it's 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 an amazing story to hear it directly from you, but I think it's really scaring when you're in that in that moment in that situation. You know. Yes, and uh, you know we we heard about a couple other bands that had bus crashes like Ghost Inside, for example. Yeah, a week or two before, so. It does get kind of scary, yeah. yeah. And 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 the old school bus crash from you know Metallica, yeah. you know that took Cliff Cliff Burton's life, um, you know. So it does get kind of scary. Does that change your your travel behavior when you listen to stuff or when you read stuff like the Ghost Inside that you hear it? You know that some of the band members really have to to learn walking again and that stuff. Does does it make you think about the way you travel as a band through through the countries? Well, of course you think about it, and but you know. You, it's going to happen anywhere. I mean, what happens if I'm if I'm driving down the street and I crash? It's yeah. it's the same thing. You can't be afraid of everything. Yeah. You just have to live your life. And it's unfortunate that those kind of things happen. And we're just lucky that everybody was okay. Yeah. So um, I think you know everyone everyone knows about the, the 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 attacks that happened in Paris and a lot of bands canceled their shows. So I think it was two weeks ago when I went to to see Five Finger Death Punch and Papa Roach, you know, and Devil You Know. Both of those bands, you know, went home. They canceled the shows. Was that a topic for you too? Did you talk about that? And and why did you decide? You know, now we no, we want to do the show here. Well, we wanted to continue to do the shows. I mean, that's exactly what the terrorists want you to do. You know, is you know, pack up and go home. They want to incite terror to make everybody afraid and and to disrupt disrupt normal life. So you know, normal day to day life, things that you do. So we wanted to continue. We were just more concerned about if people were going to come to the shows, if uh, the shows were actually going to happen, was the city going to let the shows happen? But um, you know, our sh all of our shows, you know, continued and. You know, we everything went without a hitch, without you know, any problems. So, we're just very happy that people wanted to come out and live a normal life and come and enjoy a concert and uh, you know and have a good time. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, coming back now to to the to the tour, you know, it's 20th anniversary. You know, wow, this is this yeah. is a massive thing. You know, yeah. and um. I just put a note here. So I think I've seen you with the manufacturer. I think it was 95 or 96 here in Cologne. Wow. So when I was, you know, I'm, I'm 43. I'm think, I think you're, you're I'm up there. Uh, a little, <laughs> bit, little bit up there, but yeah. we're, we're close to the same age, you know. So, so we've been, you know, the same age when you've been on stage. And, and now you go in, on tour with that, with that um, anniversary and you see the, the, the same people, for example, like me, but they have their kids with them. You know, how does yeah. it feel to you? It feels cool that, that they're passing on the generation, you know what I mean? Um, you know, yeah, we do see older people and they bring their kids. I've heard people say, yeah, you know, uh, 
uh, there was a guy who yelled out, yeah, he goes, because uh, Bird says, we're going to play you some old songs from 1992 from our first record. He goes, some of you might have not been born yet. And one guy goes, yeah, my dad's seen you. <laughs> okay, that's so, cool. yeah. so that's cool, yeah. But, um, but, you know, 20 years, actually 25 years, Fear yeah. Factory has been together. I think but, the, 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 his dad passed the... Um, the the torch new machine to him yes. to listen to exactly know, yeah and it's really cool to see the the newer younger generation coming to the shows and appreciating the old songs and celebrating you know demanufacture um, most people most kids that when they get into fear factory they usually go back uh, and when they go back they discover demanufacture cuz you know obviously some kids find out about us later on you know DJ Mortal mechanize and so on and so on, and then they go backwards, and they fall in love with Demanufacture. So, Demanufacture is that one particular record that you know a lot of our fans seem to like, and of course a lot of guys like you reliving their ones, yeah. their high school you know <laughs> high school days, yeah. which is really cool. But the one question we do get asked a lot is if we're going to do the same for Obsolete. Mm, okay. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see. That's like what two three years from now. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. So. Um, you know, what, what, what kind of expressions do you take? I think it's the last show in Germany today, or is it the end of the tour? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Today, no, it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the tour, but it's the last show of Germany. I remember back in 1995, or I'm sorry, 1996, when you saw us on the Demanufacture tour, we did 14 shows in Germany. Yeah. It's a lot. That's a lot. That's yeah. A lot. What kind of expression do you take now back home, you know, now being 20 years later with, you know, with, 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 with that album? Oh, wow. Um, I'm just glad that we get to do it. You know, we did it in Australia. Um, we also did it on the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. And then now we get to bring it here. And, you know, it's just, it, 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 it's, I'm glad that the songs certain songs get to be played like songs like new breed piss christ hunter killer a therapy for pain all those songs now are getting attention because even when we released the record in 1995 and we toured we never played those songs we only played the hits you know d manufacture replica zero yeah, signal yeah. you know we always played those in the set list but now it feels really good you know to come around the world and give those songs the attention that they deserve. Yeah, that is not just a B-side, you know, that's yeah. really, it's all, every, every song is an A-side. You know? Correct. That's the thing. Okay. So, um, the, the current album, Genexus, is, is um, you know, about, about, again, about the topic, you know, mankind, man, and human. So, um, I think um, Burton is a, is, a, is a huge sci-fi fan. Um, I don't know if you're in that sci-fi topic as well. Um, well, that's one of the things where me and Burton got along was that we were both big science fiction buffs. We love, of course, science fiction movies, you know, everything from Dune, Terminator, Blade Runner. I mean, uh, hundreds of movies. Um, also, you know, a little, Bert's more into science than I am. I'm more into, like, you know, the s social things that we all know about. Mm -hmm. Bert goes a little bit more deeper than that. You know, he reads a lot of books and stuff like that. Um, I usually watch stuff on YouTube. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the new record, Genexus, is basically the singularity process where man and machine have become one. Yeah. Whereas in our previous albums, like early albums, we talked about, you know, obviously D Manufacture was man versus machine. Yeah. And then, um, you know, obsolete was where become man is becoming obsolete. You know, where Digi Mortal is where, um, you know, we're being able to download our memories and transform them into clones. You know, and then mechanize is how, it's the beginning process of Genexus. Yeah. <clears throat> and so now we're at Genexus. It is here. The singularity process has already happened. We are one with machine and how it, it describes on the record of how we use this technology and how, whether it's for military, uh, whether it's for manufacturing purposes, whether it's just for regular day-to-day -day life and how this being exists in the world. Yeah. 
So, but that, that sounds to me a little bit like, you know, make it a circle, make, make a thing round with Genexus now. Is it um, something where you say, um, is it, it is scary as well as it's, you know, there is a good and evil and the ugly with it? You know? Well, there are some people who think that it's a scary thing and there are some people who are, right now who are actually trying to stop the process. Yeah. You have Stephen Hawking's who got a group of scientists and they're trying to ban the future of this technology. So is it, is it something where you say, um, you know, that it, it concerns me where, um, you know, s things should be fluid and, you know, just go on, that, that people say, you know, no, we have to, to ban things, we have to, you know, stop things? So in other words, you're saying, like, should it just keep going, just being the evolution of, of man, just yeah. letting it go? Yeah, I mean, there's some people who say that. I mean, of course, there are going to be benefits to this technology because, you know, nanotechnology, we're going to be able to inject, you know... a a, yeah. a, a cell, yeah. a, a, a small cell, cell. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to heal us, to, to, yeah. to cure certain cancers and stuff like that. But um, you know, unfortunately, it will not happen in my lifetime. I wish it did because I, I would like to see where this goes. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you, I don't think you can really stop evolution. I mean, that's kind of like what the Terminator was about. Yeah. You know, trying to go back, back, yeah, back yeah. in time yeah. to stop the future. Which is, it's, happen, yeah. which obviously, yeah, it doesn't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> yeah, make, and it makes sense, you know, because I think evolution is 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 never stopping. That makes the word evolution a, a sensible word, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the whole meaning of evolution. I mean, that's how we got here. Yeah, exactly. Millions and millions yeah, years, years later. Here to record yeah. Yeah, just chatting about stuff. <laughs> exactly. Know? So, um, when when you look to the you know, up to the, to, the, to the metal scene, you know, 20 years ago and now. So is there an evolution as well? Or do you think it's always, you know, the same thing over and over again? And um, are there young bands which influence you? Or would you say, no, it's always the same thing that the old bands influence the young ones? Well, it's definitely the old bands that influence the young ones, of course. I mean, that's part of the learning process. You know what I mean? Like, you know, bands like Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, those are our history books that as as a musician that's something that you should learn you know not necessarily maybe learn the riffs but learn the history of music um and you know obviously you evolve from there you know for us when we first started as a band you know we were very much influenced by a lot of the european music uh you know the early grindcore scene the early death metal scene the early industrial scene and all that Uh, even even techno scene because we didn't really even see well the first record we came out in 1992 when we came to Europe in 1992 or 93 we witnessed the whole techno scene out here it was very big back in the day a lot of the rays yeah. that stuff was really massive dude it was it was, it was it was a massive and we were like wow so we just heard you know more extreme techno out here and we were so when we created Fears, the Mind Killer, and Demanufacture, we were influenced by all that. Oh, okay. Yeah, everything from, yeah, well, you listen to songs like New Breed. That's a techno riff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, early techno to the, to the grind, to the death metal, to electronic music, uh, to industrial music, to pop music, you know, and to melody. And that's where... Fear Factory was able to create this their own sound by, you know, learning about other styles of music and somehow incorporating it into our music mm -hmm. and creating something new out of it. And that's how we evolved. You know what I mean? From solving a machine to D manufacture is a big jump. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? And so we evolved as a band. And then each record you try to evolve a little bit, a little bit and incorporate other things or go different directions. And that's how we, you know, uh, evolve in that way. And for me, musically, I like everything that influenced me from the past. I still love it. Um, normally, there's not really new much, mu not really much, like music that really uh, touches you. Yeah, that, that, that inspires me. Okay, I mean, sure. I, I like listening to new music. Don't get me wrong, but as far as inspiration, it still comes from some of the older generation, um, uh, or new forms of technology that really inspire me. But you're open-minded, you listen to every piece of music, you know, it, it, as long as, you know, it, 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 
it I'm, comes to the bone or something? Yeah, or I'm, I'm very open-minded. Whatever, whatever I, I am attracted to, my ears are attracted to. That's what I like. Yeah. You know, I don't hold, I don't hold back. Oh, you like this band? Like, are you like this type of music? Oh, you're, you're not a metalhead. I'm like, are you kidding? I mean, yeah. metal is my heart, but I have an open mind to, to yeah. other music. It's the same discussion, like you know, having long hair or no hair. Are you a metalhead without without hair? You know, I think. Look, 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 look Kerry King. Yeah. Well, look at the old, look at old Sodom pictures. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. had short hair. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, <laughs> they were young. They just started to let them grow. So. Yeah, and then uh, you know, look at uh, when Metallica cut their hair and. Yeah. But, no, but, but they they cut their hair and changed the whole style, yeah. you know. So it was a different thing. But um, yeah, I don't think it matters what you look like. Yeah. It's really what's in your heart and really what you want to go with and be yourself. Just yeah. do what you want to do. I'm, I'm with you. So when you when you um, look, you know, beside Fear Factory. So there's there's, you know, we are happy to have you back, you know. So but there is. Um, a lot of stuff which happened, you know, as, as side projects. Uh, for example, you know, I, I love Divine Heresy. So um, that was that was some very aggressive style, which which I I, I really, you know, that what what. But well, still that, very melodic. Very melodic, but very, you know, um, some sometimes um, pieces miss the aggressiveness when they get too melodic. You know, with Divine Heresy, you had, you know, that mixture was was awesome to me. So, and I listen a lot to the to, to that stuff. Is there something in the side project where I say, you know, they still live, or, you know, sometimes it might, you know, in the next future it might happen that there will be something from from the side project as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, we're going to be making more records, of course. Okay. Um, you know, when I came back into Fear Factory, I wanted to concentrate on Fear Factory sure. <clears throat> and I wanted to kind of rebuild it because when I was gone for a few years it kind of went down and I wanted to come back and kind of rebuild and when I did the first record Mechanize, it's kind of funny because when, when I came back Mechanize was probably one of our heaviest records next to Soul of the New Machine our first record and it probably had my influence of Divine Heresy in Fear Factory. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot more riffs, there's guitar solos, yeah. you know, there's more thrash elements. Yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe that's a little bit too close to Divine Heresy. So we started to, you know, change a little bit, you know, for what Fear Factory is. Yeah. And I think that on Genexus, we really hit the mark on Fear Factory. It is. It so is. Yeah. I need to, for me as a musician, I need to go back to Divine Heresy to make another record to do that other side of me, yeah. which is the more heavy, more intricate, yeah. uh, you know, guitar solos, of course. Um, but still, in some ways, it's very influenced by Fear Factory because we had the melodic and the heavy vocals. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it just was done more extreme. Yeah. When um, I listen to the, to the new album, Genexus, I, I think it's, it's also a very heavy album. As you know, there is a lot of melody in it, but it's really, it, it, it sounds very angry. So, it's, so it, it sounds like there was well, there was much anger in you when you wrote it. <laughs> I, I, it yeah, it's it's in me. It's yeah. in me. Whenever I create heavy music, there is this. Um, I'm not going to say angry, but this aggression mm. or an outlet. Okay. Yeah. Um, and plus, when I when I write heavy music, I want it to be heavy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want it, I want people to feel the passion. You know, when Bert sings or when you hear the riff or when you hear the beat, I want people to feel like. You know, that one. Yeah. I want them to feel that machine, that, you know, angry, cold machine. Mm. But at the same time, here comes Bert's beautiful vocals. And that's why I think the combination of the two has always worked yeah. really well. It has. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. It's not still, yeah. So. But there are, there's still some people who don't like the melodic vocals. Really? Yeah. Really. So yeah. In, in in my area, some of the people I know, they they all like it. So yeah. yeah. But I know there's people. I know there's people. Who I call them douchebags who don't like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever. I mean, whatever. Whatever. You, you know, whatever floats your boat. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So um, coming coming back to Fear Factory means um, there is a lot of aggressiveness still to produce new stuff. So you're going now on tour with the with the 20th anniversary. But there, will you come back for just Genexus stuff, or will you play Genexus stuff as well today? We'll be back in the summer for just Genexus stuff, so. Okay, so and then we we'll see you next time. But, 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 no, but we are playing Genexus stuff today on this tour. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, of course we do. We do the album in its entirety. We do demanufacture in its entirety. Then after that, we come back and we do some Genexus songs. 
Awesome. I'm really looking forward, and um, I want to thank you for that time, you know, to, to have that chat with me. And um, so, if you want to tell something to the people of Metalheads um, from the website, so... I want to say thank you for, sh for your support. 25 years of Fear Factory is the reason why we are still here, and we thank you very much for keeping us alive. Thank you, Dino. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.